Hey guys, let's take a look at what's called solving multivariable equations. Now, uh, multivariable means you're going to have an equation with an x and a y and a z and a b and a, I don't know, I can't remember any of the other letters of the alphabet. I'm kind of not too good at that, but anyway. But the point is, let me tell you something that's here, this will help you in, in your whole math career. If something works and a method works, then it works. I don't care if you go to calculus one day, if something works, then you just, you can keep using it. I, my, one of my sons was in calculus years ago doing some like complicated problem. And he came to me, he was like, you know, I got it to this point. I can't even, I can't remember how to do this. And I said, well, look, this is the method, blah, blah, blah. He goes, oh my gosh, I completely forgot about that. It's been like four years since I did that. But I said, no, if it works, it works. And it was just something we did in algebra. And he was in calculus doing all these differential stuff and oh, all this mess. But anyhow, the point is, uh, let's look at this. So how do we solve an equation with an unknown variable? What's the goal? In other words, when you have this, let's say, for example, 3x minus 7 equals 12x plus 23 or whatever. The goal is to, that's 12x. The goal is to get all those x's over here, all the numbers over here. Finally, you're going to get x completely by itself. 1x, positive 1x equals blah, 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 whatever else is over here. That's the goal to just get everything, get the x totally by itself, everything else on the other side of the equation, that's how you solve it, right? Okay, well, it doesn't change, even though we have a's and b's and x's and z's and y's and all that mess. So let's go ahead and do this. Go copy and uh, pause and copy here. Okay, and they're saying solve for y. Well, let me tell you something. If you have one equation and you have a y and an x and a z, you're not going to know what the actual answer is as far as, oh, y is 12, I found it. You're not gonna be able to figure it out. You don't care. All you wanna do is do exactly the same thing you did on this previous page. You get x, I mean y, all by itself over here, one y or one x or whatever. Everything else gets mashed over there. And then you got it, okay? So let's solve for y. Well, first off, if this were a normal equation, you were solving for trying to get, in other words, you're trying to get rid of this. You don't want that over there. You don't want the negative x. You don't want the positive z over there. You want it gone. Well, we know how to do that, right? Over here, oops, if you have, let's say, you know, 3x plus 8 equals 20, well, you're just going to go, oh, I'm going to get rid of that 8. What do we do? We, we subtract it. We subtract it. Okay. Well, that's what you're going to do here. We want to get rid of the negative x. We want to get rid of the positive z. So all we're going to do is we're going to add an x and subtract a z. And don't forget, this is an equation. So over here, we're going to add an x and subtract a z, right? So we have a new equation. This is gone. We have a 6y. That's all we have left. On the right side, we have a 4. We have a plus x. We have a minus z. But we're not ready yet, are we? Because we how many y's do we want to have to solve for y? Six, right? I mean, excuse me, one. We just want one y. We have six. So we're going to have to divide by six. And of course, over here, we're going to have to divide by six. Oops, I didn't write that very nicely. Let me try that again. We're going to divide by six. Okay, well, this is gone. We have the answer now y is equal to 4 plus x minus z over 6. That's it. Now, what is that? What's the actual number value of this? I have no idea. It depends on what x and z are. They could be different. You could be doing something where you can plug in numbers for x and z and see if your equation works or see if whatever. Okay. By the way, just to let you know, um, if you divide a, 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 like a series of terms by 6, what you can actually, another way of looking at that is that each one of these is divided by six. In other words, it, we, it's four divided by six plus x divided by six minus z divided by six. So my point is, you might see the answer written like this with a six under all three of them, or what you might see is them individually with a six underneath them. Now, four divided by six is a fraction that gets reduced to two thirds, right? So that could be your first term. The second one would be x over 6. The third one would be negative z over 6. In other words, this could be your answer in the back of your book. You might see it that way. If you do, 
It's okay, no, no problem. This is fine to put as an answer. Just be aware that that might be written a little bit differently. Okay, pause and copy. Okay, let's solve for y, which means we need to get all the y's on the left. Everything else goes to the right. Okay, well, let's just get rid of this. Uh, we need to get rid of the 4x. We need to get rid of the 2. We don't want that over there. Well, let's go ahead and subtract 4x, and we will subtract 2. So over here, we subtract 4x, we subtract 2, right? Same thing. So this is gone. This is gone. On the left side, we just have a negative 2y. On the right side, we have y, let's say, minus 4x. And then we have, since we have a negative 4 and negative 2, that gives us negative 6, right? Okay. We're still not in good shape. We want y by itself. But we have a like term, y. We need to get rid of that. So we subtract y, and we subtract y. There we go. So now we have negative 3y on the left. This is gone. We have negative 4x minus 6. Okay? Now we got it, right? In other words, if you had an equation like this, we have one more step. If you saw this as an equation, oops, and it said negative 3y equals 15, you would go, okay, no big deal. Um, divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, and the answer is 15 divided by negative 5, I got it. Okay, well, that's exactly what we're doing here. The same method. We're using the same method. Method work, we use it. We're dividing by negative 3. And the whole thing gets divided by negative 3. Well, we're done. y is equal to negative 4, x minus 6 over negative 3. That's a 6. And don't forget, by the way, that the back of your book might individually, you know, divide this by that and then divide this by that. So a negative 4x over a negative 3, a negative divided by negative would be a positive. Okay? So that would be 4x over 3. And this, a negative 6 divided by negative 3, is 2, so plus 2. That might be the answer in the back of your book. All right? Okay. By the way, last thing. Here's another thing. If you get an answer, and you have an answer that says negative 4x minus 6 divided by negative 3, if the answer in the back of the book has every single one of the terms in your answer completely backwards, in other words, instead of a negative 4x, they have 4x. Instead of a negative 6, they have positive 6. Instead of a negative 3, they have 3. You're fine. That's okay. So they might have it like this, where they actually you know, reduce each fraction individually, or they might have an answer that is every single term that is the opposite of every single term in your answer. Either way, you're in great shape. No big deal. I'll explain more about that, that later, okay? Pause and copy. And let's solve for P, okay? Well, first off, we want to get rid, we just want P, that's already on the left. I'm gonna get rid of this and that. So I will subtract 2A and add 5, which means I will subtract 2A and add 5. Now I just have 4P on the left. On the right, I have 6A minus 2A, that's 4A, plus P, plus 5. All right, now I wanna get rid of the P on this side. So I'll subtract P here, and I'll subtract P there, and 3P, and that's gone. That's going to be plus 5. And the last thing, you tell me what's the last step to solve for P? Divide by 3. Okay, and this can be your answer right here. That is your answer. Oink. P is equal to that. You tell me. If they were to, if you're looking the back of your book and these were fractions, what would the two fractions be for that final answer? It would be 4a over 3, right? You might even see this, 4 thirds a, you might even see like that, plus what fraction? 5 thirds. There you go. That would be your answer. Okay, great. All right, let's take a look at one more. Actually, a couple more here. So, two more. Pause and copy, and let's solve for x. All right, well, let's first off, let's get these x's together. Let's make an x and a plus 
3x. So we're going to have a 4x, right, on this side. So that's gone, and then that's gone. And look, we can, I, I think that at this point, we can probably go, okay, that's, I got a 5y and then minus 2y, and that's going to give me, let's just go ahead and do it, that's 3y minus 4, and that's gone, that's gone, 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 and that's going to equal 0, right? Okay. Now what do we need to do? Minus 3y plus 4. Minus 3y plus 4. And I have my 4x. I have my negative 3y. And I have a plus 4. And the last step, divide by 4. You can do it this way if you want to. Or the back of your book might, in other words, this is x equals that. Or they might individually do again do these fractions, so that would be negative, we'll call it 3 fourths y for this one. And then what's the last one going to be? 1. There you go. You got it. Boom. Okay. All right. Let's try one more. We'll go to the practice set after this. Let's pause and copy. Why don't you try this yourself? Pause it. Try the entire thing. Get an answer. Write it as one fraction, and then write it as individual fractions, and then let's come back together. Okay, well the first thing we need to do is get rid of the 6x and get rid of the 4. So over here, minus 6x plus 4. So we have 4y is equal to, let's see, I got a 2 there, I got a plus 4, that's going to be a 6 minus 6x, right? Okay. Divide by 4, and this is our answer. And by the way, since all three of those terms are divisible by 2, you would want to go ahead and kind of reduce all three of those terms by 2, by a factor of 2. In other words, you would go, okay, 6 divided by 2, 3. Negative 6 divided by 2, negative 3x, of course, and then a 2. And there you go. Okay. The way you do this with individual fractions, you would say that y is equal to 3 divided by 2 minus 3 over 2 times x. And there we go. All right. Hope that was pretty good. Okay. We'll go ahead and try uh, practice problem A. Solve for y. Pause it and come back when you're ready. All right. Well, let's move everything over. And I think we can probably do this in our heads, maybe right now. Here's an 8y, right? You move this over, and we move the negative 8 over. That turns into positive 8, which gives us 8 plus 4 is 12, and then plus 13x. And by the way, when you're doing equations, if you want to think of this as, I'm just going to move this over. I'm not going to go and I have to do this. I'm just going to go to the other side. You're just going to change the sign. In other words, the 13, negative 13x turns into positive 13x. The negative 8 turns into positive 8. 4 plus 8 is 12. Last step is to divide by 8. There we go. That can be your answer. Completely fine. If you want to individually do fractions, 12 divided by 8, 4 goes into both of those, right? It goes 3 times, and it goes 2 times. And this would be 13 on top, 8 on bottom, times x. And that would be your answer or y. Either one of those is completely fine. Alright, pause it and try B. Okie doke. Well, let's do a little at a time here. I'm going to move this positive 3w over here and that turns into negative 3w. And I'm going to move this negative 2p over here and that turns into positive 2p, of course. 2p plus 8p is 10p. Negative 3w plus w is negative 2w, and then, of course, minus 15. We're solving for p, so we divide by 10, and that is going to be your answer right there. If, it's, uh, if you want to do it fraction by fraction, we'll do this one first. Yep, there we go. And negative 2 divided by positive 10 is a negative, you know, 1 over 5. So that would be negative 1 fifth times w. And then negative 15 divided by positive 10 will be negative, and 5 goes into 15 three times, 5 goes into 10 twice, 
and that would be another version of the answer that you would get there. So there we go. All right, that should do us for today. Hope you guys have a great day. See you next time.